Use your GDC to draw graphs of the following functions. State the domain and the range in each case. So we've got f of x is minus x plus 2 squared plus 3. B, f of x is x cubed minus x squared for x being between minus 3 and 3. And C, f of x is equal to 3 to the power of 1 minus x. So do one by one. First one here is f of x is equal to minus brackets x plus 2 all squared plus 3. Let's go to our GDC, select a graphing mode, and we will now graph the function. So it's minus brackets x plus 2 squared plus 3. And we get that sort of curve here. I'll just move the uh, label out of the way to one side. What we're going to need to know is the coordinates of this particular point here. This is called a maximum point. So on the GDC, it's very easy to find. You go to menu, number six, analyze the graph, and then select number three, maximum. You can do the same for a minimum as well. And go to the left, enter, and then to the right, enter. We'll just move that label up above the top like that, okay? Right, now that we've sketched that, so what we've got to look for is maximum and minimums when we're doing this sort of thing. We need to just sketch a graph, so a set of axes, x and y, drawn with a ruler, reasonably large. Draw on our curve, label it, f of x is minus x plus 2 all squared plus 3. Mark on the coordinates of that point, which is minus 2, 3. Now the domain is all the values you can put into the function. So we can put any value, any real number, into that function. Though the graph ends here, it goes on ever more that way and forever more that way. The range, though, well, the, the range will start from here, this point here, okay, 3, and will go downwards forever more. So we can write down that the domain is equal to x belonging to r, comma, the range is f of x is less than or equal to 3. It's equal to because that point is actually in the... Uh, minus 2 is actually in the domain. Okay, next one. f of x is equal to x cubed minus x squared from x being between minus 3, but not equal to 3. Okay, so what we need to do is we'll go and sketch that. So we'll just make a new window for uh, graphing. And we'll just sketch that. So it's x cubed minus x squared. We won't worry about the restricting the domain. So we'll get a graph looking like that. What we're going to do is set our window, our X window. So go to Menu, Window, and go to Window Settings. All right, it's going to go a little bit more than I need. So it's minus 3.5. I want it minus 3 and 3.5. I'm not going to do anything to the Y window yet. And press OK. And then I'm going to do one more zooming technique now. So Menu, Window Zoom number 4. And then I'm going to go to Zoom Fit. And what that does, it will fit the graph for the set of the x-axis that I've chosen. Right, now in order to find what happens at minus 3 and 3, I'm going to go to Menu, and number 5, Trace, and go Graph Trace, and then I'm going to move the arrow key to that point there, and take note there that uh, the y value is minus 36. Okay, and then I'm going to do the same again. Menu, graph trace, but this time go the other way. I can actually enter the value if I wanted to. We can trace along a graph, and then press enter, and then I've got the other value there at 18. So, a couple of screenshots of what I've just done. Okay. So I've got uh, minus 36 here for y and 18 here. So I need to draw the graph again. So just draw the graph. It doesn't need to be the scale, but reasonably large. Now at this end, I need to put a solid dot because it's actually equal to minus 3. 
but at the other end, I need to put an open dot because it's not equal to three. That's how we distinguish something's equal to something and not equal to something. The domain, I label the function, the domain will be all those values, close dot here, open dot here, and the range will be from minus 36, which I got from here, to 18, what I got from here, that will be the range, but this has to be an open dot. Writing down the domain, the domain will be from minus 3 to 3, but not including 3. The range will be from minus 36, but not equal to 18, but less than 18. So it's very, very important that you distinguish that when you're doing this type of question. Right, to our final one. Our final one is f of x is 1 minus x. So we're going to go to our graph of that. So we just go to... Uh, menu here, go to graph, and 3 to the power of, that's that button, 1 minus x, press enter, and we get a graph looking like that. Now what's happening here, this axis is getting very, very close to the axis, but it is not actually equal to the axis. So there's a screenshot, and here is my graph, to draw a graph, so what we've got here is what's known as an asymptote. We'll talk about that in a minute. The rate, the domain, I can put any value of x, both positive and negative, into that function. However, the range, okay, the x-axis here is what's known as an asymptote. It's a horizontal asymptote. So what happens, the curve gets very, very, very close to that, but it's never actually equal to zero. Okay, so this is called an asymptote. So my domain will have to be an open box here because it can't be equal to zero and it can go on forevermore up the y-axis. So finally, the domain will be x is belongs to r and the range will be f of x is greater than zero but not equal to it. Okay, thank you very much for watching.